Greetings in the name of Jesus. This is Brother Minister from the Silver Souls Ministries of the Truth Be Told campaign. Today, I'm going to speak on about the Ten Commandments. A lot of people uh, debate, discuss, argue, however you want to put it, about whether we should keep the Ten Commandments. I'm going to talk about the difference between the Law of Moses and the Law of God, which is the Ten Commandments. Notice that I'm saying there's a difference between the Law of Moses and the Law of God, which is the Ten Commandments. And I think this is where people are getting or messing up and getting mistakes. So I'm going to do to my best ability to try to show that there's a difference between the Law of Moses and the Law of God, which is the Ten Commandments, which I believe is the moral law of God, which is supposed to still be obeyed. We know many scriptures that say, if you love the Lord thy God, if you love Jesus, um, you obey his commandments. I mean, he says if you if you love him, you obey his commandments. According to John chapter 14, verse 15, there's many places where he said, even in the Great Commission, to t tell them to go out, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all that he commanded them. So there's some commandments that we have to keep. Jesus Christ said, the uh, greatest commandment of all is to love him with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and all your might. The second is likened to that, that you uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So with that being said, he summarized that up in the Ten Commandments for, for us to keep the first commandment and uh, the second commandment that he spoke of that he summarized. We believe that the Ten Commandments is what he was referring to. He summarized it. The first four is the way that you show God that you love him. The, the next six is to show how you show your neighbor that you love him. If you practice these things, this is how you're able to keep that law. So the Ten Commandment law is still in effect today. The problem that people have, obviously, is if you ask a whole church if they should keep the Ten Commandments, everyone in their hand, everyone in the church will raise their hand until you point their sin out and say, well, why don't we keep the fourth? The fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments is remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Everybody knows that the Sabbath day means rest and the Sabbath day was sanctified by God himself, which is the seventh day of the week. The problem with Christians nowadays is that they sanctify Sunday as the day and they have no scriptural support. Yeah, they have a reason. They say they do it because Jesus Christ rose from the uh, from, from the grave on the first day. I agree with that, but it doesn't mean that the scriptures say that we're supposed to do that it still should have never took taken away the fourth commandment so we're going to see a difference between the law of moses because everyone says that the ten commandments are nailed to the cross and i'm going to show the error in that and i'm also going to show you the difference of it so i want to start off reading this scripture real quick just just to put it on here um it says that uh, uh when people keep saying that it was nailed to the cross and talking about the laws in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 it says think not this is Jesus speaking think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets I'm not come to destroy but to fulfill them it says for truly I I say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jaw or one tittle shall in no wise pass in the law till all be fulfilled now he says that it'll, he didn't come to destroy the law so we know obviously that he can't be talking about the Ten Commandments uh, uh, that that is nailed to the cross or destroyed. Now let's get into the differences that we can see the difference between the law of Moses and the law of God. Uh, open your Bibles to Luke. Hopefully I can get this done in three sections, but I'll try as quick as I can. Luke chapter two, verse twenty-two. Luke chapter two, verse twenty-two says this. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to, pre to present him to the Lord. Notice in Luke chapter 2 verse 22 says, And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses. It was referred, this law was referred to the law of Moses. Jump to Isaiah. I'm showing what is referred to in the scripture. What it's called. That was called the law of Moses. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 24. We'll read. And we'll see if there's another law called something else. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 24 says, therefore, as the fire devoureth and stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so the root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Notice that is referred to the law of the Lord. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15, which most people love to use these scriptures to talk about this law. We're, we're, I'm proving that there's a difference in the law. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15 says, having abolished in his flesh the enemy, enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of two, one new man, so making peace. Having abolished, meaning taking away in his flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in the ordinances. Keep that in mind. Ephesians 2.15, it says, 
the law of the commandments contained in ordinances. It said that was abolished. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15, I agree. Now let's look to James chapter 2, verse 8. Follow me through these whole segments so you'll see that I'm showing a different law. That was a law that was abolished. We do see that in Ephesians chapter 2, 15. Jump over to James chapter 2, verse 8. It says, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. Now, if the law is taken away, then why would James say, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, and then say, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, which was, which was Jesus spoke of as the second commandment of when he summarized the commandments. So how can we keep the royal law if it was supposedly abolished? So we have to show, therefore, that it was a different law talking about in Ephesians chapter 2.15, which was taken away. And then James talks about a lower law that, law that we should keep. Two separate laws. Are you following me? Turn your books to Chronicles, please. Turn your books to Chronicles. We know that Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. And his Bible cannot contradict itself. The word of God cannot contradict itself. And that's what I love about being a Christian is that our, our, our book, our word, does not change. And nothing can contradict itself in it. 2 Chronicles chapter 35, verse 12. It says, And they removed the burnt offerings that they, that they might give according to the visions of the families of the people to offer unto the Lord as it is written in the book of Moses. Notice that it says it is written in the book of Moses. 2 Chronicles 35, verse 12. That's what it's called. It is written in the book of Moses. Now jump to Exodus 31, 18. Exodus 31, 18. I'm showing the differences of these laws. How it was talked about, uh, the names that it was given, and all that. We just seen in uh, 2 Chronicles 35, 12, it says it was written in the book of Moses. Now, uh, Exodus 31, 18, referring to the law of God, the Ten Commandments. It says, 31, verse 18 says, And he gave it to Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon the Mount Sinai, two tables of the testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Notice it says it was written by God on stone. And the other one said, the law of Moses said it was written in the book of Moses. Can we see the difference? Now I'm going to show you a physical, I'm going to show you a physical separation to prove that these are two separate laws. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 26. It says, take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against these. It says, take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark. Now that's referring to the book of Moses, right? Well, go to Exodus chapter 40, verse 20, and you will see a big difference about the physical separation to show that these laws are separated, even in the physical. Exodus chapter 40, Exodus chapter 40, verse 20. Now you said, you seen that one, it said it was put in the side of the ark. Now look at Exodus chapter 40, verse 20, referring to the Ten Commandments. It says, and the, I mean, in the, yeah, the law of God. It says, and he took and put the testimony into the ark and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above, uh, above, I mean, upon the ark. Notice that the law of God was put inside the ark. When you look inside the ark, uh, when you look inside the ark, and when you go back to the Old Testament, see, it was the Ten Commandments that was inside the ark. Also was Aaron's rod and also was um, uh, um, the, uh, uh, um, the bread that was in the um, thing. I'm, I'm using the wrong terms, but it was the bread in there. When you go back and look, the, those were the only three things inside. It was manna, sorry. It was manna inside the ark. Notice it says inside. So how can the book of Moses be placed on the side of the ark, but the Ten Commandments or the law of God on the inside? The point I'm getting to is there had to have been two different laws. Does everybody see that? Inside the ark was the law of God. On the outside was the book of Moses. Do we see that? So there was a difference. So what is the law of God? It's the Ten Commandments, if you will continue on with this study with me. I'm just showing the physical separation from it. If that was showed that way, then we see there got to be a difference, and this is where people's missing it. Jump back to Ephesians 2, uh, 15, where it says that it was ended at the cross. Talking about the laws of Moses was ended at the cross. We understand that, right? I agree with that, that it was ended at the cross. We'll find out later because it was shadows. But I want to show you that it was ended at the cross. Now, let's look at Luke chapter 16, verse 17. And it says, it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Another law. So we're talking about two separate laws. We can't say one minute that it won't pass away and the next minute it is nailed to the cross. It must be talking about two separate laws. So we got to understand that there's two separate laws. I'm going to pick up in the second segment 
continue to follow me. I'm showing the difference between the law of Moses and the law of God. I'm showing it with scripture. Now, anyone could correct me on this, but I'm showing you with scripture that there is two separate laws, the law of Moses and the law of God, which I'm saying the law of God is the Ten Commandments. Meet me in the second segment, and God bless you.